Cool. Well, I'm going to have to read for some cards because I've not done this before, so but I'm going to give it a go. Here we go. So, yeah, we all know who Heidi Klum is, don't we? Well, my name's Dell. Sometimes they refer to me as the anti Klum. You know, where I was born and brought up in South East London, you know, before the uh, trains and all that got there and it all got gentrified, it was a bit rough. But I was written off at primary school. You know, they said I'm not going to, you know, um, I'm not going to achieve anything. I'm not going to win anything I'm, because I'm too disruptive. I'm too crazy for the teachers, too interested in not learning and doing my own thing. You know, so I was sent off to a shit secondary school again for nothing and just wasted. Maybe, you know, finishing school was going to be prison for me. End up in prison and, you know, life a dead end and on the dole. But one day, I found myself working as a cycle courier in London and I was stopped in the street by a very well known photographer and he asked me, Can I take some pictures here? Now, me, being from South London, I thought, fuck this, what's this weirdo one? <laughs> so my reply was, are you going to pay me? He said, yeah. <laughs> so then, I thought of another idea. Can I keep my clothes on? <laughs> and he said, yeah. So then, that began like a friendship between me and a photographer called David Sims. And basically, he gave me my first portfolio and said, now, I stopped working with him, you know, because he got me jobs with, you know, companies like Kelvin Klein, Levi's, Diesel, Vogue magazine, but fashion is just full of fashion wankers, really. Um, <laughs> and he said that to me, I won't go far in fashion. Tomorrow, it'll be somebody else. They'll be the new person. Do some commercial work. And you can do commercial work as a model till you're about 100 years old. Ooh. So that's basically what I did. So I rung up ugly models in London that had been going 50 years. And they said to me, oh, come back in June. Because um, this was before the internet. And I couldn't wait. So I went up to the agency one day. And I said to the agency, Here's my portfolio for the courier. I'll come back in a week and pick it up. They said, I'm not allowed to do that. I said, goodbye. So, went back a week later. They signed me. Started doing work, music videos, commercials around Europe. Earning a good living. Quite a lot of money came along to me and everything. Um, and then, after a few years, I moved to Berlin looking for work. I wanted to stay in Berlin. I had enough of London. But where could I find an agency that could represent me? In London. Uh, sorry, Berlin. Now, my German is not that good. I can't speak so good Deutsch, but I can understand it just a bit. But we can, we can do that. So I arrived in my Berlin with no idea what I was going to do. And then somebody said to me, well, if you can't find work, make your own work. And that, that sort of lit a spark in my head. So, for what am I good at? Well, I'm good at looking pretty in front of the camera. You know, so perhaps I should go back and do modelling. But I can't do modelling more than once or twice a year. So I need another job. I know, why don't I sell models? So, there became the idea of me opening up an agency with no German, in a foreign country, don't know the market, but I did it. This was in 2000, about 2011 and all that, that I started doing that. You know, so then I had to start collecting models. You know, and I had these commercial, um, I had these castings for models and everything back in the day. And some of them, were well, they were all sorts of people coming along. You know, they were coming from Hamburg, they were to Berlin, Saarbrück and some from Finland. A couple actually came all the way from Paris just to join my agency. And one day, now what I'm looking for in my agency are people that are different, that stand out from the norm, 
not your blonde, average, blue-eyed that you would see on, you know, a Heidi Klum show or something like that. I'm looking for, like, people who look like they drive a taxi or, or a truck driver, you know, for commercial work. And I was holding this commercial one day, uh, sorry, I was holding this car sim one day for new models, and I get a phone call. And the person says to me, oh, I can't come to your car sim today from the other side of Berlin because it's raining. I'm like, well, it's raining? Yeah, but, yeah, but it's raining and they'll get wet. I'm like, well, what if I send you on a job and it's raining? Well, that's different, they told me, because they're getting paid for it. Well, I wasn't interested in their work ethic, so I just said, well, if you're not coming, don't bother. Bye. Then I turned around. You know who's standing there? A guy in a wheelchair. Well, he wasn't standing there, he was sitting there. Uh, anyway, he was sitting there, and he came all the way from Cologne in the rain. That was scary. Naturally, I took him, you know. He's come all the way from Cologne, you know, disabled and wanted to do it, you know. Now, some of my models here, I'll talk you through it. Um, these are some of my models. Now, this is Anna Marta. She's actually quite a unique young lady in herself. Um, she's actually sitting somewhere in the audience, so I don't know where. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and Anna Marta, she was one of those people that got, well, she didn't get up and come to join me. She came in a wheelchair. And a few years ago, she, her story is that she contracted polio, I think, as a child. And then they found out it was a mixed diagnosis. And she just didn't learn to walk as a child. And now she's learning to walk. Happy do that. Good on her. And then I have other models like Ugas little fat, round guy who plays roles of dwarves and things that I sell to TV. Now, I don't push people into doing jobs they are not happy with. If Ugas doesn't want to wear a silly costume and look silly, he doesn't have to do it. If he wants to look serious, like Peter Dinklage on Game of Thrones, he can do it. But he just has to tell me. I have this guy. He's actually one of our busiest character models in Berlin. This is Dirk. Two meter five. Scary. <laughs> yes, you don't want to upset him. People actually cross the road <laughs> to avoid him when he's walking down the street. Yeah, he's got the Harley and everything. He's got the look and everything. He plays the aggressive biker in commercials and walk-ons um, when they need a bad boy. Now, ah, Mike. This is Mike. He's actually another unique individual that Unfortunately, lost a lot of arms. Sorry, a lot of his arms. Um, overhead railway thing uh, fell on his arms and he nearly lived and blah, blah, blah. But his passion is motor car racing. And well, he's still doing it with a foot control, racing cars for fun and a hobby. Again, he's not letting a disability stop him from doing something and living his life. We have another mic. This guy is actually discriminated against by the disabled community, believe it or not. Um, he's actually a champion, uh, what do you call, snooker player here? Yeah. But he's not allowed to join the disabled people's ranks for, to play snooker because he's not sitting in a wheelchair. He actually uses his foot and his arm to play. But that's not allowed in the rules of disabled snooker. Whoopie doo da. Uh, this is Ressi, another one of my smaller models. Does a lot of work, a little bit of a powerhouse, and um, again, sometimes we need small people. She was called up last week to play the role of a, a young child in a movie where they can't use people at night on a shoot, young children. But unfortunately, that didn't work out. Ronnie, your classic truck driver. Yes. He came to me, why can't I say you have him? Now, people like Ronnie excite me more than I do Blinking Clum, you know? Um, yeah, he's actually quite a good guy. Hopefully we're gonna get him some work. And then we've got Trish, 
your typical old cuddly grandma for them great roles, you know? And all these other agencies at work, they, all they care about is young, pretty, perfect girl models. Me, I want them any age, any color, any shape, any size. This is Marlon. Marlon actually comes from Jamaica. Yes, he's an albino. Somebody rung me the other week. Do I have any albino black men? Yes, I know of two in Germany. One with me and one with another agency. Again, Marlon might get some more work. Uh, this is Sabina, another good looking model who's doing a lot of work. And this is Florian. Uh, the other week I did a, a call out for him and we were looking for people to play the part of a hunger strike. He's actually got a muscle wasting disease, but he's willing to do the work. Again, he traveled from Bremen to join me. This is actually one of my best and well-paid models. This is Sebastian. When I met him, he was 200 kilos. He lost weight and he got down to 200 kilos. And he did an MRI scanner job for me, quite well paid, for America, for the American market. So yeah. So, you know, sometimes we might need people like him for medical work or bed testing, or we might need a small person for another role, for playing the role of a child or a leprechaun. But as long as the people are happy to do that, then I'm happy for them to do the work. So, yes, the typical... Now, yes, I invite people to join my agency and I try to get them work, try to get them their 15 minutes of fame and everything. But I don't build up people just for them to come to me and just say, nah, it's not worth it. They've come a long way. I either say yes or no on an email. And that's what I do. I mean, take for instance Down syndrome people. Now, when they smile, it comes from the heart. Why hasn't advertisers in Germany using more Down syndrome people hold a product, big smile? That will sell, but they won't do it. Why? Maybe they can't find them. Well, I have an agency full of Down syndrome, uh, not full of Down syndrome, but I have a couple of our Down syndrome people. You know, the, age, the, the advertising industry in Germany is not really diverse enough. You know, maybe the next generation, it could change. We are looking for more, well, I am, and the other agencies are not, people of color, different shapes and sizes, and things like that. It's a change in market. Okay. So, yeah, that's basically what I'm trying to do, is give people the chance to have their 15 minute of fame, come to me, and I will try to sell them, get them some money, and obviously everybody is happy, and we're gonna try and make sure that they have a good time and see themselves on TV or on a billboard and say, yeah, I was once a model, like Del Kings. You know, you only get one chance at life, live it. Fuck what other people are saying about you, live your life and go out there, enjoy the sunshine. That's it, that's basically, yeah, go and live your life, do it. Cheers.